The beliefs and doctrines of Jehovah's Witnesses have changed a lot over the decades. In fact, I dare say that if you took someone from the 1950s, 60s, 70s, or even the 80s who was an active member of Jehovah's Witnesses and put them into a Kingdom Hall congregation today, they would hardly recognize the things that are being taught because there's very few, if any, major doctrines of Jehovah's Witnesses that have not been changed pretty significantly over time. Now, in the world of Jehovah's Witnesses, this is not called a change in, of doctrine, though, not at all. When I was younger, they used to call it an adjustment or new understanding, but that has also changed. They no longer call it that. Now they refer to it as new light, and this reference comes from a scripture that I'll read to you in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18, which in the New World Translation says, but the path of the righteous is like the bright morning light that grows brighter and brighter until full daylight. And the current understanding of Jehovah's Witnesses, here's how it works. Jehovah hasn't given us all the information yet. He's given us enough so that we have what we need, but little by little over time, he gives us more light, more understanding, and things become clearer. They use an analogy from Proverbs that in the early morning hours, you can see, but not very clearly, but little by little, the day gets brighter until all things are clear. Now, that sounds good, right? That sounds good. And it also seems to express a form of humility in that they admit we don't know everything right now. Over time, our knowledge becomes better. They say that that's guided by Holy Spirit. But there are some problems with the way Jehovah's Witnesses view this new light. First big problem is that the changes often have far-reaching impacts of the people in Jehovah's Witnesses. Now imagine you believe one thing to be true today and then suddenly it changes, but if you based your life on that thing being true and now it isn't or it's significantly different, you're seriously impacted, sometimes quite negatively. And we'll get into a few examples of that in a little bit. But two, the other big problem is that this new light does not come through Holy Spirit on different members of the congregation throughout the world. No, this new light only comes from the governing body. They say that they are Christ's channel on earth. They refer to themselves as the faithful and discreet slave, which Jesus mentions in the gospel. They put that label on themselves and they say all that new light comes through them and they disseminate it out to Jehovah's Witnesses. This leadership structure is based on the belief that God has always used an organization to lead his people, and they draw parallels with the nation of Israel in the Hebrew Scriptures and with the apostles, and they say, look, Jehovah has always had a group that were the primary leadership of his people. That's no different today. That group is the governing body, and so all new light will come through them. But there are some serious biblical problems with that, which we'll also get to in a second. But first, let's just look at a couple of pretty big changes in the way Jehovah's Witnesses believe that happened over time. Now, the first one you're probably familiar with is changes in the understanding of what the word generation means in Matthew 24, 34, where Jesus said that this generation will by no means pass away till all things occur. Well, at first, Jehovah's Witnesses taught that that meant that some people alive in 1914, which is what when they teach the beginning of the last days was, they would still be alive when the end came. That was the teaching for a very, very long time, for decades. The problem is, it's been 110 years since 1914. All those people are long since dead. They're not alive. The end is not here. Well, of course, Jehovah's Witnesses, the governing body, could see that coming, and so they changed that doctrine. They, Of course, they say this is new light from Jehovah God, that God clarified it for them. But they changed it to where now there's an overlapping generation, and that generation doesn't mean just the people alive in 1914, but also the people that came after them that were within their generation, so it's overlapping. And that bought them a lot more time for the end to come. And they, of course, say, this is just new light. We haven't changed things. We've just clarified thanks to Holy Spirit and God revealing these things to us. However, big problem with that is that if you believe the end is coming imminently, let's say that it's now in the late 1970s, early 1980s. It has been, what, 60, 70 years 
that population is greatly aging, you think the end must be really close. In fact, there was an awake in the 80s, I believe it was 1988, that said the generation that will not pass away, right? So they still believed it then. Everyone was really old, the end must be really soon, and then all of a sudden it isn't, right? Then all of a sudden it could be much farther away. If you built your life around the belief that the end was coming soon, did you plan for decades more? You didn't, right? Because you were a true believer. You really believed the end was coming and then it didn't. And now you're up a creek because you didn't plan for the end not to come. But because you're not the recipient of the new light, you had no advance warning of this. Suddenly you're hearing about it from the governing body and you're in a pickle. So that's a big problem. Another one that you might not remember unless you were in the religion for a long time is the adjustment to the interpretation of the superior authorities in Roman thir Romans chapter 13. For decades, the Watchtower taught that the superior authorities in that passage referred to Jehovah God and Jesus Christ, but they changed that to say where they acknowledge that it is actually talking about the superior authorities that are the governments. Now, that happened in 1962, that changed. So you might not remember that one. I wasn't born then either, but I read about it later. Now, what's interesting about that is it had profound implications for how members interact with government authorities, including participation in certain civic duties. Like, what if you were called to war? There are, at least in certain countries, acknowledgement of opposition to warfare, and you can be assigned to civil service instead, where you're helping out the government, but you're not actually fighting on the front line in the military. Well, in the past, Jehovah's Witness, could, they couldn't do any of that. But now it's different. Now you could accept alternative civil service. So some people went to prison for refusing to fight or to join the military or even take the alternative. And now it's okay, you can do that. So how much destruction was wrought on the lives of the people who believed with all their hearts that that was true and suddenly it's not true. And that seems like kind of a huge change for God to reveal to the governing body out of the blue. It's because this isn't a refinement, right? This isn't well, we have this much information, so this appears to be true. Now we get a little bit more information, and we're just changing it a little bit, but the brunt of it is the same. No, they completely changed from the superior authorities is Jehovah and Jesus to the superior authorities is the governments. That's not a refinement. That's a complete reversal. So it's hard to justify that with the new light understanding of things just getting a little brighter all the time. No, that that's not... A little brighter, that's from complete darkness to total light in a room. Not the same thing. So that's another example. Then we have revisions to the prophetic interpretations around 1914, 1925, and 1975. Jehovah's Witnesses early on, though they were called Bible students, and they thought the end was coming in 1914. And then it changed to where, no, 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 the end began in 1914. And well, then the end was moved to 1925. But that didn't happen either. And then in 1975, all kinds of expectation was built up around that year being super important and that it had been 6,000 years since Adam's creation. Huge things were going to happen. It was implied very strongly, even if never directly stated, that the end was coming in 1975. And again, I go back to imagine people who plan their lives around all of these things being true, and then they weren't. They weren't planning for the future. They weren't planning for a future in this world. And now it could go on for who knows how long, and they're totally unprepared. They didn't go to college. They didn't build a career. Maybe they didn't take out life insurance, you know, things that could help the people who come after them. They're not saving money. They're not making investments. They're not doing things to help their years to follow be easier. And now they're in a pickle. And the Watchtower does not take care of people in the organization financially. They don't do that. So you're on your own or subject to the kindness of some people in the congregation should these things happen to you. But if these things happen to everybody because the change suddenly happened and all of a sudden, well, the end's not coming 
immediately, it could be decades, decades, decades down the road. Everyone's in the same pickle if they were true believers. Only the people who actually did the things Jehovah's Witnesses said not to do. The governing body said, says not to focus on your secular life. That you should be storing up spiritual treasures. They used to say all the time that you should pioneer, put more time in service, serve where the need is greater. Don't focus on your career. Focus on God's kingdom and getting that message out. A lot of people did that. Then the end didn't come and they were completely unprepared for taking care of themselves for the decades to come. Does that sound like a God of love? Does that sound like what a loving God would do to suddenly subject their people, his people, to this very difficult set of circumstances completely unnecessarily? That doesn't sound like God to me. That sounds like humans realizing they were wrong, changing things, and then trying to make it look like it's just new light from God. And this pattern of significant doctrinal changes, it raises questions about the, this process of new light that the governing body uses. Critics argue that these revisions indicate that the governing body's understanding is subject to human error, challenging the notion that they're uniquely guided by Holy Spirit. Does it sound like Holy Spirit if you thought you had the absolute truth, and then that truth completely changes. Is that how Holy Spirit actually works? And that leads to debates about the nature of divine guidance, the interpretation of scripture, and the authority of the religious leadership of the governing body within the faith of Jehovah's Witnesses. I mean, after all, these changes, they don't just lead to arguments over theology. They have real life impacts on the people who are Jehovah's Witnesses that are trying to be faithful to what they're taught by the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses. The Bible itself actually tells us that God does not choose just religious leadership to disseminate truth, light, and understanding. In fact, let's look at a couple of examples of where Jehovah used some very different people that were not at all leaders in the religious faith of the Jews to help the Jews in understanding and in action. The first example I'll use is Amos. Amos was a shepherd who was chosen by God to deliver prophecy to the nation of Israel. Amos was not a prophet by profession. He wasn't born into a family of prophets. He wasn't in any of the leadership. He wasn't a Levite. Like He was none of those things. He just tended sycamore figs. That's what he did. He was a farmer. But God chose Amos to deliver a powerful message to the northern kingdom of Israel. So that's just one example. If God only reveals new understanding through the leadership, why didn't he choose the priestly class of that time in the Jews to give those prophecies? But he didn't. He chose Amos, just a guy who nips figs off of trees. Like, that's all he did. But he was... A prophet, and there is no one in the world of Jehovah's Witnesses, the governing body, completely except Amos as a true prophet of God, but he wasn't in any kind of leadership class. So that's one example that seriously draws into question the governing body's claim that new light only comes through them. But there's a couple others. There's also Deborah, who was a prophetess and a judge who led Israel in Judges chapter 4 and 5. Now, what's interesting about Deborah. She was a judge that saved the nation of Israel. And no one denies that she, a woman, was used in that capacity, right? She wasn't in the male-dominated hierarchy of the time, but God chose her. Now, in the religion of Jehovah's Witnesses, women cannot be on the governing body at all. Women are sub to be subject to the men. Women don't teach the congregation. They don't give talks. They can't be elders. They don't have positions of responsibility or authority, and they certainly cannot be one of the governing body members. But the Bible shows that women played a very powerful role in the nation of Israel. And again, Deborah was not in any kind of leadership class at the time, but she was a prophetess. That does not jive with the idea that only the male governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses are responsible or the channel through which new light comes from Jehovah God, does it? I got another one. 
the young boy Samuel who received and delivered a prophecy from God in 1 Samuel chapter 3. Samuel was just a child. He was serving under Eli, the high priest, but he received a prophecy from God that he gave to Eli. He was not in a position of power. He, obviously, he was just a kid. But Jehovah chose him to be the vessel through which the new light came. The prophecy came. So those three examples, Amos, who was a shepherd, was not of the Levite class, was not a priest, became a prophet. Deborah, a woman, became a prophetess and a judge of the nation of Israel. And Samuel, a child, received a prophecy, which was given to Eli, the high priest. Those are just three of many, many examples in the Bible that show that God does not always choose one group of people through which the truth comes. New light does not, should not, come from only one group of men, not according to the Bible. So what are the benefits to the governing body if they claim that new light only comes through them? Well, they can cover up their mistakes and just say it's new light from God, right? You can't dissent with them because if you disagree with them, you're not working with God's chosen, anointed, faithful slave. Therefore, you are an apostate and should be kicked out of the congregation and shunned completely. And that's another thing that's very much changed from the past. In the past, Jehovah's Witnesses, the governing body, the Watchtower, has decried the Catholic Church for its excommunication practices. Jehovah's Witnesses did not always disfellowship and shun the way they do now. That change, that's a massive change that took place because it helps them maintain control. If you can just leave the religion because you no longer agree with it, because your faith is taking you another way, maybe because God, like with Amos, like with Deborah, like with Samuel, has given you new understanding and new light, and that leads you away from the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, they can't control you anymore. You're not paying them anymore. You're not doing their work for free anymore. You're not building their kingdom halls for free anymore. And what does that do to the power structure of the governing body and Jehovah's Witnesses? Well, it breaks down. So what control do they have over you? Well, if you leave and leaving gets you shunned, you can no longer see any family or friends that are still Jehovah's Witnesses. And since Jehovah's Witnesses teach that you cannot have close friends outside of the organization of Jehovah's Witnesses because they are all part of the world, they're a bad influence, well, you're stuck. You lose your entire social network. Sometimes you lose your job if you work for a witness. Now that's strictly illegal in a lot of countries, but if you think it doesn't happen, you don't know anything about reality versus law. It does happen. It has happened. That control keeps you tied to the governing body and Jehovah's Witnesses. Now, there are other scriptural critiques to the concept of new light. One comes from Jude chapter 1, verse 3, which speaks of the faith that was once for all entrusted to God's people. And that suggests that the core tenets of Christianity don't change, but the core tenets of the religion of Jehovah's Witnesses have changed many, many times over the decades. There's also 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, which Jehovah's Witnesses know very well. And that asserts that all scripture is inspired by God and sufficient for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. And that challenges the need for ongoing revisions to doctrinal interpretation. That also challenges the need to have anyone like the governing body at all. Because if all scripture is inspired, if that's all you need, if it's sufficient for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training, all you really need is the Bible and a relationship with God. You don't need a group of men telling you how you should believe. The Bible makes that very clear, and the irony is that it makes that clear in a scripture that the witnesses know very well. At least they use it all the time when I was in that religion. But they never stop and think, about what it actually means. It means you don't need the governing body. You don't need a religion at all. Christianity, as a commenter put it very well, is not a religion, it's a relationship. So although it's great to be around people who are of like faith as you, you don't need that. 
to have a relationship with God. What you need is God's word and you need a relationship with God. That's what most mainstream Christianity teaches. They're not Jehovah's Witnesses, even though it's right there in the scriptures, 2 Timothy chapter 3, that witnesses know very well. The New Light Doctrine brings up real problems in transparency and accountability because the errors are hidden and masked as just new light from God. It also seriously downplays the role of critical thinking and personal Bible study because you read the Bible and it teaches you something. And then you go to the Kingdom Hall and you read something in the Watchtower that says, no, 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 what, you're, what you think it means is wrong. This is what it means. You are expected to just believe the governing body and what they printed in the Watchtower and to reject your own understanding. But that's not how Christianity works. It certainly isn't how things worked in the first century. The importance of the individual believer's engagement with the Bible while guided by Holy Spirit is undermined for the discernment of truth. People should read the Bible, be guided by Holy Spirit if they're Christians, and apply the truth they learn in that way. This approach emphasizes the priesthood of all the believers, which is a principle suggesting that each Christian has direct access to God and the responsibility to interpret Scripture Personally, not doing this creates the potential for the misuse of authority on the part of the governing body because there's no checks and balances. In the religion of Jehovah's Witnesses, once the governing body says something is so, you have to go along with it. If you don't, you're an apostate, you will be kicked out and shunned. Dissent is not allowed from the congregation. Even if the majority disagreed with the interpretation that the governing body puts down, they will never go back and rethink their decision. You must obey or there will be consequences. And that does not sound like Christianity to me at all. So to sum this up, the concept of new light has serious flaws. It puts all the power in the hands of the governing body. It has produced doctrinal changes that have caused massive harm to the rank and file Jehovah's Witnesses. It is a contradiction of the biblical examples of people who were in no way a part of the priesthood or any organized group of leaders that were chosen by God to reveal his messages to his nation. It removes accountability and transparency, and it does not jive with a Christian's individual relationship with God. But that's what I think. What do you think? I would love to know. Please leave your comments below. Be sure to subscribe to my channel, and if you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it with others. Take care.